morning guys. Going on a short day hike today. Been collecting some tinder as I've been hiking. Uh, today I'm going to be trying uh, different fire building methods, different tinder, natural, and uh, things I carry in my backpack for emergencies. Also brought along my 10 by 12 tarp. Had that for about a year now. I want to try just a few different shelter configurations. <laughs> supposed to be a very mild day here in Alberta and originally I wanted to talk about the clothing I wear for extreme cold temperatures but you can see I'm dressed for more milder weather today and a lot of times when I'm getting ready for a hike I look through my backpack and I think about why do I need to carry all the things I do you know tarps, fire kits, buck saws and uh, you know I'm always trying to pack lighter get rid of some weight and last week we got hit pretty bad with the blizzard and that kind of reminded me of why I carry the things I do. You know, it's through experience that I, I carry more things. You know, 10 years ago I carried probably half the amount I do now. And it's through hiking in the worst kind of weather that made me realize that I need to carry more things. So in front of you, you'll see two Ziploc bags. It's full of tinder that I've been collecting on my hike. I think it's a really good idea to keep a bag with you in your front pocket. Uh, the biggest problem with natural tinder is finding anything that's dry. You know, during the winter, everything's wet, covered in snow. But some of the things I collect and that I'm familiar with are cattail fluff, dry grass, red pine, which is just simply dead pine needles, birch bark, seed heads. Uh, there's also feather sticks you can make. Uh, some of the things I carry in my pack are dryer lint, cotton balls, you know you can mix dryer lint with wax, cotton balls with Vaseline or lip balm, jute twine, paper, alcohol prep pads, and the biggest problem with uh, some of these tinders is there's not very much longevity in them. That's why it's good to mix uh, these Tinders with wax, Vaseline, pine sap, birch bark is really good because it's got the oils built right into it. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about is my 24 inch buck saw. Because it's 24 inches, it gives me more options for firewood. You know, you might end up in an area where there's only larger diameter trees. And if you're carrying a very small buck saw or a folding saw, going to leave you with fewer options. It's got a nice big arch for larger diameter. As you can see I spray painted it fluorescent orange and I also have reflective stickers on it as well. I keep this on the back of my backpack. This helps make me more visible. Uh, I have two ranger bands. What these do is it holds this uh, handle in place. You know, if I lift this handle, it makes the blade loose, so it keeps the handle tight. And when I remove my buck saw guard, I can actually attach it with the um, ranger bands. The buck saw guard is uh, made from a PVC pipe, and all I did was cut a slit in it works way better than the those buck saw guards you get with the blade that they last about five minutes in cold weather. So for extreme cold temperatures this is the way to go. You know obviously you're adding extra weight, extra bulk, but I think it's worth the weight. So I just wanted to quickly talk about some fire building methods, share my thoughts on them. You know, just remember I'm just out here having some fun with these. It's not a video dedicated specifically to fire building methods. And I'm not going to cover everything. It's just what I have with me today. 
Uh, matches. You very rarely ever see people use matches uh, on YouTube. I'm not a big fan of them. And we're talking just regular matches here. We're not talking about the other kind. If you're going to use matches, obviously get the waterproof ones, the store matches. And I actually uh, made a what's called a super match. I'm going to try that out today. So here's that super match I was talking about. Uh, it's three matches, just regular matches, taped together with some electrical tape. And in between the three, there is uh, a piece of dryer lint and some Vaseline. So I just want to try it out. The method I'm going to be using mostly today is with my ferro rod. Uh, there's certain advantages and disadvantages to all these different fire building methods. Obviously, ferro rod, you know, you can get it wet. It's good for thousands of fires, but it takes more skill to find the proper tinder to get a fire going. I still have trouble some days, you know, just doesn't work for me. I have a flint and steel kit. That method is fairly reliable. You know, it can also get wet and it will still work, but you need char cloth. I can only use, uh, get a fire going if I have char cloth. Uh, bow drill method, you know, it's a good skill to know, but it's hard to master. Uh, it's just not, for me, it's just not very reliable yet. You know, there's tons of times I come out into the woods and I just, I can't do it. There's times when I can, sometimes I can't. And the most difficult thing is finding suitable materials for the bow drill. You also see a lighter there. Uh, disadvantages to a lighter, you get them wet, they're no good. You get them cold, they're no good. Best thing you can do if you're carrying a lighter is to put it in a you know, waterproof container, Ziploc bag, and keep it in your inner pocket. Keep it nice and warm, especially during uh, winter conditions. Good thing about the lighter is they're just, I find it just really reliable. And people, even with very uh, poor fire building skills, can usually get a fire going with the lighter. So I just wanted to mention one more time that this is a homemade knife. And I wasn't getting very good sparks at all off the spine. I'm going to have to resharpen this edge. So I ended up using this edge of the blade. You're not supposed to, but uh, you do what you have to do. And I used just the back part here, and I'll resharpen it when I get home. So I've been playing around with different uh, tinder. Cattail fluff, red pine, birch bark. Not having too much luck today. You know, pretty mild conditions. I hate to be doing this when it's uh, really windy, snowy, cold. But I'm gonna get the fire going right now. It's just a little one. So here's my 10 by 12 camouflage tarp I was talking about. That's about as small as I can bundle it up. So I have some regular cord here. I usually mark out the length of my cord. And I got some tent pegs. So I'm just going to fool around with the tarp for a bit. So there's just a basic windbreak. This is a shelter I'd set up if it was snowing or raining. I know it's pretty basic, but like I said, I've just, I've never played around with this particular tarp before. It's been a while. I was trying some different things. So that is more of a lean-to style shelter. You can see it has a floor, so in case you're sitting and the ground is wet. And you can also pile up spruce boughs underneath the tarp for comfort and to keep you off the ground. And uh, underneath where the base is, there's lots of brush. You can see all this brush around here kind of giving me grief, but you get the idea. See 
within about 10 minutes, I made this very simple tool, a baton. It's great for splitting wood, uh, pounding in tent stakes, stuff like that. Sun's starting to go down. I got my backpack all packed up again. The worst part was folding up that 10 by 12 tarp. Never quite works out the same when you're out in the woods. You know how they say it's all downhill from here? Well, for me, it's all uphill. Don't have a long hike, but it's a real tough one. 